about the numbers. They, they're not exactly matching what we were told this morning. We were told this morning that we were still slightly short of a full recovery from the world before, before the recession. Can you explain the difference? Yeah, I mean, well, I don't know what, you know, I it can just tell you the numbers. The government jobs were still. We, we, look, all we have counted through the entire time I've been in is private sector jobs. Okay, these are private sector jobs. We're not counting, you know, government jobs, and I never, I have never talked about that. I have only talked about private sector jobs because you only grow your economy with private sector jobs. We're not against government jobs, we're for them. We've made it clear that we were not going to balance our budget by having some devastation of our workforce. We are down the lowest number of employees in 30 years, but that's because we're getting people to work together and we're not replacing people. We have, there's been some uh, rifting going on in the state, but the large majority of this is just not replacing people when they retire. Uh, but when you, when you think about your economy, you're, not, you're thinking about the number of private sector jobs you get created, and that's what I've been using consistently uh, the entire time. Governor, with what you've said this morning, is this part of your story if you run for president? Well, yeah, of course it would be. Uh, what do you think? I wouldn't tell people, but look, I don't know if I'm going to run for president. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to tell, well, there's a couple things I want to accomplish. One is I want a balanced budget amendment at the federal level. Uh, they're incapable, over time, on a regular basis, of being able to make choices and figure out how to innovate, make changes, and I will tell you this. The federal government has gotten so big that if they would just set the goals and begin to let states who earn the right to run their own programs, run their own programs, that is the key to the 21st century. We have so much bureaucracy, so many silly, I'll give you a good example. In the welfare system, we want, we want dad in the home, don't we? I don't know anybody that would say, no, it's, it's good if dad's gone, but if dad's in the home, they can lose benefits as a result of that. So dad either leaves the home when they come checking, or dad's not in the home at all because it hurts the family. Now, why don't you let me set these rules? Okay, you tell me what the goal is. The goal is to get people out of welfare. Okay, well, I'll tell you how to do it. I'm going to leave dad in the home, and I'm going to create a system where people can work their way off of welfare by not punishing them for more success. That's what we're doing with our... Uh, with our child care. We're saying you can go up to 300% of poverty and we're going to be able to get you to work your way out of it. Let me give you another example. Transportation. For years I've been suggesting put a couple of pennies in maintaining the, uh, the, the interstate highway system around the country. Let me keep my own money here. I don't want to send my money to Washington in the gas tax and have them shake a lot off the top and give us less back with a bunch of rules. We could run our highway program far better if they just let us do it. So the balanced budget amendment is very, very important to me, and I'm going to continue. I've been in, I don't know how many states now. Um, the funny thing about the opposition to the balanced budget amendment, it comes from the far right. I, it's astounding to me. The far right is stopping, in some of these states, the ability to, to force the federal government to balance a the budget. They think, okay, if you go to a constitutional convention, the next thing you know, who knows? They'll take our guns. They'll take our kids. I mean... It, it's, just, it's just ridiculous, but that's what we've, we're up against. But we're making progress. Governor, you, where do you... Hold on. Yeah, I'm not done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just chill. <laughs> the other thing that we are doing is I want people to hear the Ohio story. I intend to... I'm, I think I'm going to be, be speaking, I'm hoping, at the Detroit Economic Club. I will be traveling to other states, other venues, to tell the Ohio story. The Ohio story needs to be heard because of what we have achieved and because of the example of what leadership is, and not just mine. My leadership is give some directions and get the heck out of the way and encourage these people to do big things. We talked about that this morning. If you, wanna, if you, want, to, if you want to fix an old Austrian clock, you don't move the little handles, you move the big dials because that's what moves the little. In our state, our philosophy is big, innovate, think big, get it done, don't play politics. The country needs to hear this. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to tell them this, whether I run for president or whether I don't. And when, when I make a decision, and I don't know when I'm going to make a decision, I've been advised by one person that wrestled with it, didn't run, 
He said to me, you just make a decision on your own time frame in your own way. Don't listen to anybody else, all the experts that, you know, we got people that don't know anything about running for president who pontificate about what it ought to be. Well, I'm not interested in what they think. So I'll decide it at some point, but I love doing my job here, as somebody duly noted uh, when I did deliver the State of the State address. So, of course, it's pretty good. When you have, when you have a record like we have in Ohio, people got to look at you. Can you talk okay, about now.